We Infuse Podcast, episode number two. Welcome to We Infuse Podcast, where we take the confusion out of infusion. And our whole goal with this podcast is to equip you with tools, tips, tactics, and a roadmap to really just have a successful infusion therapy practice, whether you're a provider office, a standalone infusion suite, or whatever the case may be, maybe even thinking about opening an infusion practice. That's our goal is to equip you and really create a place for just a platform for the infusion industry to keep you guys up to date with the latest uh, information and tactics on this incredibly complex but exciting industry. And today, I have a special guest with me who also happens to be my other boss, Reese Norris. So, Reese, thanks for being on the show, man. Great to be here, Dylan. Thanks so much for having me. Awesome. So uh, for those of you that listened to the last podcast, we did mention we're going to bring Brian Nyquist on. We decided we're going to postpone that interview to be in person at the FSR conference, which at the time of the recording of this podcast is in the future. So we're going to interview Brian Nyquist in person live at the FSR conference coming up very soon. And uh, But in this episode, we're going to kind of get into the background of Reese's story with Infusion what got him into the infusion space, and kind of where we're at today. So, Reese, just share with our audience kind of your background in infusion and what got you into it. Dylan, yeah. So it's funny. We're in my dad's office, and my the genesis of We Infuse uh, can ultimately be traced back to my dad, who started an infusion center management company back in the early 2000s. Uh, Brian Johnson and I, who's my co-founder at We Infuse, we were both – uh, in college at the time, my dad started uh, the infusion center management business. So um, he was a very small player in the infusion center management space. So you've got the big dogs today, like Helix and Altus and Interfusion. And then there's a lot of smaller players as well. Uh, so our roots can trace back to when he started the infusion center management business and basically recruited Brian right out of college to come work with him, Brian Johnson, that is. And then ultimately, I went on uh, to grad school and then came full circle back uh, into the infusion center business uh, after grad school and after I spent a few years working in uh, corporate law. Interesting. So you went to school to be an attorney. Your dad starts this infusion practice. Brian Johnson gets involved. So what caused you to go from being trained as an attorney to getting into the infusion space? You know, it's been an interesting journey and uh, definitely fun. So when Brian and my dad were um, growing the business, running with boots on the ground, rolling up their sleeves, uh, it just inspired me that I wanted to be involved. I mean, one of my closest friends from college was doing it. My dad was doing it. Um, and so I was just always involved in the periphery. And so I just wanted to you know, take a deeper dive into the business. Um, there, through some changes in management, there was an opportunity for me to step in. And really, when I stepped in, my dad and I really turned the keys over to the business to Brian and I. And that's where Brian and I really transitioned the business from being a manager of infusion centers to being an owner. Um, we felt with the new reimbursement challenges, um, as Brian mentioned in the last podcast, the Medi- Medicare Modernization Act of 2006 really had some reimbursement changes that made us you know, have to move from a very um, high margin business to a very low margin business. And to do that, Brian and I thought we'd be best suited instead of as managers that we would own the actual infusion centers. So we went through an entire business model transition of, you know, ending our current management contracts with physician offices to actually opening up our own infusion centers that we owned. Interesting. So you went through this journey from law school to seeing an entrepreneurial opportunity with Brian, your dad, you're switching business models, you're bringing about new revenue streams, new challenges, new opportunities and all that stuff with your training as an attorney and your own skill set. I mean, what everybody had a different role. What, what would you say was your main area of expertise and all that? You know, it was really, you know, obviously providing leadership. I mean, Brian, and I really ran the organization day in, day out, but also, you know, knowing kind of the best path forward uh, after the 2006 reimbursement cuts. Again, they really didn't take effect until 2008, which is about the time I showed up. Um, and so we really had to reinvent ourselves. And I think when you're doing that, there's a myriad of challenges. Uh, when we, when we owned infusion centers, we hired nurse practitioners that created its own challenges. We had never done that before. We, we were very well versed in hiring nurses and registered nurses, 
but we hadn't stepped foot into hiring actual actual nurse practitioners. And then just transitioning the entire business model um, was was really really challenging. We moved offices. We moved from uh, Fort Worth into the mid cities, which was an own set of challenges as well in terms of our corporate infrastructure. Uh, and then we decided to uh, close a lot of our remote facilities um, that were um, lower volume and bring them in, bring those patients into our higher volume, larger facilities that were more centrally located within the city. And then once we did that, we were really able to streamline the business. And then ultimately, we built uh, our own legacy proprietary software system. Again, that helped us scale as well. So we had a proprietary software system that helped us operate more efficiently. Interesting. So you guys, you you had an existing management pra- company. You switched gears, changed business models, dealt with scaling, staffing, a changed business model, a different way to run things. And you, I know from working with you, obviously your strengths were leadership, tightening operations, thinking ahead strategically. So going through, I mean, you said it a couple of times, it's challenging. It's We have doctors listening to this podcast. We have nurses listening to this podcast. We have business people, people in many different roles in the infusion practice in general listening to this. And with your your leadership and and focusing on operations, tightening things, streamlining things, what's one big lesson that you would want our listeners to take away from what you went through and all that? There's a lot of lessons I learned, but I think I think the major lesson is, and I'm thankful, obviously, to have a great team. I think you build a team, you build the foundation, um, and you you ultimately you begin with the end in mind. And our, our end was to transition out of the managerial model into the ownership model where we own the actual infusion centers. And so once we made that determination, we all really knew where we were going. And I think, you know, when everyone has the same common goal on the team, um, that's, you know, hugely beneficial. I mean, I still remember the core team. It was, you know, Steph Parks leading billing and reimbursement, Brian leading operations and you know, leading our software development and really honing in on our systems. And then we had Kendall Brown uh, really leading our marketing and PR efforts up here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, Jennifer Katasic down in Austin. And um, um, and so we had a really, really good team. And I think that when you have all, when you're firing on all cylinders like that, we obviously had an incredible clinical team. Um, and that goes without almost saying, because you shouldn't be in healthcare if you don't have a great clinical team. So Amy Arredondo was really instrumental in helping us on the clinical side. Um, and we also had a lot of new nurse practitioners that were willing to, willing to roll up their sleeves. So in healthcare, like in any business, there's a ton of moving parts. You have to really have a great team. But you're doing all these things, but you're having to maintain clinical excellence. And I think that can never be compromised, nor can that ever be lost on anyone. And so, again, kudos to Amy, kudos to our nurse practitioners and our nurses that really stepped up because they really, through all that transition, really kept a clinical, the clinical solid um, and our clinical, clinical excellence, I, I think, was first in class, best in class. Well, that's awesome. And I mean, that's something we, we talk about with, with our clients and potential clients is that challenge of you have a doctor or a group of doctors and nurses that are clinically trained, but it's the, it's the challenges of a business being a business person. Like you said, just the principle of having a great team, communication in your team, encouragement in your team, streamlined processes, everybody having roles that they're well suited for all these things that maybe as a person that's really focused on the clinical side, doesn't realize how valuable that's going to be, or they, they realize in the midst of the process, how valuable that is. So that's awesome that we can, that you can, you know, mine some gold from that experience. Um, Obviously it was a success. You guys had a very successful business. We infuse has been an exciting journey. That's growing. I mean, we're growing new, getting new partners all the time. What would you say though? I mean, everybody is going to, you know, when you listen to a podcast or you see a company from the outside, you see a successful person. And, but we all know, we both know, and any successful entrepreneur knows that you fail forward. You, you yeah. know, journey, your journey is full of failures and successes. And really all success, all failure is, is a stepping stone on the way to success. So tell, share maybe a challenge that you guys faced in the infusion practice. One of the biggest challenges you guys dealt with as you did own infusion suites. Yeah. When we were owner, owners and operators of infusion suites, one, you're, you've got referral sources referring patients in. So our target market was gastroenterologists, neurologists, rheumatologists, and immunologists. So our marketing team and our sales team went out to those asking for referrals. 
Well, the biggest challenge is, you know, meeting those expectations from the referring providers and setting expectations from our patients because these drugs are exceedingly expensive uh, and it takes a long time sometimes to get an authorization. I say long, you know, a few weeks. And so, you know, immediately we had to train our team how to handle those expectations and set expectations, not only for a new referring provider, but also a new patient. And I think, again, going back to having a good team and good communication, you have to have each department. So marketing's doing a great job out being your public facing um, strategy. Then you've got your billing and reimbursement team. So billing the claims out, making sure you're getting reimbursed for actually the services you're actually providing. Um, then you've got the clinical team. They're actually, you know, doing hands-on patient care. Um, then you've got a procurement side of the business where you're actually getting the inventory. So there's just so many moving parts. And in this business, one of the key challenges is the specialty pharmacy and by a bill inventory. So you really have two inventories you're managing. And then, so there's just a myriad of, of different things going on. And I think, especially when you're transitioning from one entire business model to another, you just have to be really careful, <laughs> you know, that you're paying attention to your, your legacy business model, but you're also thinking forward and your team's thinking forward about, you know, how to take care of these patients um, and getting paid for your services in the new model. That's, yeah, that's a lot of moving parts. So tell us briefly, if you can, about one story in particular where you dealt with an instance or a situation that was a big challenge maybe you guys didn't see coming that you really had to push through and deal with that you learned from that's made you a better business person today? Well, I think some of the challenges, we, we not only are the challenges operational, which we just talked about, but also there's external challenges, um, pin stroke risk or the government, you know, changing things or, you know, external auditors. So one of the things we faced during the midst of all this business model transition uh, not only were it was lower reimbursements, which those had already passed in 2006, we were just responding to them in 2008 through 2012 when we sold the business. But, um, you know, we had to deal with external influence. And one of those things was rack audits. Those were, those were new audits, uh, recovery audit contractor. So I believe what that acronym stands for. And it was basically Medicare coming and challenging some of your past claims. Well, we found an instance where you know, they were doing this uh, more broadly than they should have been um, and actually targeting some some actual claims where um, we had built everything correctly and we found out that it was a really global issue. And so not only were we the only ones facing this issue, but at many infusion centers, physician offices or standalone infusion centers were facing the same issue. And so what we did is we actually started an organization called the National Infusion Center Association where we could pull together, even as competitors, uh, a voice for the entire industry in the niche. And so from there, the National Infusion Center actually started because we had a issue with a specific audit that was affecting us globally. And we responded by starting an entire organization that's now a nas- nationwide organization called the National Infusion Center Association. So we could have one voice. So it's a really long way of me saying, um, you know, when you get into a biz- any business, you can see, you know, the Infusion Center a few miles away as a competitor, but they also can be, you know, great ally, um, especially as you, you know, battle, you know, similar challenges. That's so interesting. What I like about that is it really speaks to be ready to have curveballs thrown at you as a business person, sure. because we, I mean, we've, we've all heard it, but you can have, you can have a situation like a provider offers where the income is, is high, but there's a risk. And if you don't have your business processes nailed down or if you're not ready for curveballs, it can have a substantial financial impact and, and really cause trouble. So, you know, that's interesting to me that you said tying together with other other practices through the National Infusion Center Association, because there's no reason to go it alone. Right. Even if you have competitors. I mean, that's the that's the goal that I mind from from that comment from you is that even if. Any of those of you listening, we've got CEOs listening to this, COOs, providers. You do not have to do this alone. There's really no need to. There's resources out there through the National Infusion Center Association. It's infusioncenter.org, right? It's infusioncenter.org. Right. Okay. So, yeah, you can become a member of that. You can look at the website, get resources. But since this is such a unique – I mean, we're talking to the business side. Since this is such a unique business model – if you're a doctor or a group of doctors or CEO or whoever is listening to this, it's just great to know there's resources out there and you, there's there's no need to do this alone. There's a lot of equipping. There's a lot of strength and reinforcement 
that comes so you can be ready for those changes and turns in, in the journey. And just to put a plug in for a great resource is, a, is our blog. It's a weinfuse.com. Uh, you can find our blog. Brian Johnson writes most of those articles and he does a great job outlining a lot of the issues, clinical, financial, process, operational. Um, and I think it's a great resource as well. Absolutely. Yeah. Shameless plug to weinfuse.com. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> this is the We Infuse podcast. Um, let's, let's share another story with, with what you guys have been through, what you've experienced. Share with our listeners just maybe one of the light bulb moments you've had because you've been exposed to this industry. You're, you're obviously a thought leader and an expert. We get calls. I mean, I know from being in our office, we get call so many calls for people asking us for help with their current practice or with help trying to open a practice from the clinical side, from the, the all the business details that are involved, uh, everything with drug companies, distributors, payers, all the, the details that you have to consider. What's one of the biggest light bulb moments you've had that Reese Norris has had in this industry? It really comes down to when we transitioned from the managerial model to the ownership model. I was reading in the Dallas Business Journal how I think it was Tom Thumb or some grocery store chain was starting to open their own in clinics and they were able to bill Medicare uh, by using nurse practitioners. And so that really opened my eyes to, gosh, well, we're really, we're really onto something here. If they are, if they're allowed to do it, why couldn't we open our own clinic? Just focus on, um, infusion and, and also be able to build Medicare and private payers as well. And so from there, just started lots of research, um, meeting with healthcare regulatory attorneys to ultimately get that green light. So, uh, again, transitioning from the managerial model to the ownership model, knowing that we could go at this alone. Um, and I say alone, uh, we obviously need the help from the community in terms of referring providers, but that we could own our own infusion center. And I think from there, it was really off to the races for us. I think that was a light bulb moment for sure. And for those of listeners that are, that are listening that don't really know the big difference between the opportunities that are there for ownership, owning an infusion suite, why, why are there such benefits to that? I mean, for us, um, you know, managing an infusion center just had its own unique challenges. It was hard for me to envision how to scale the business because you're managing infusion centers, but they're for, for individual physician offices, which, um, you know, has its challenges when you're dealing with each client has its own unique set of processes, et cetera. So I, I was always struggling with how do we scale the business? I mean, there's obviously companies that have figured it out. Uh, I just mentioned three Helix, Altus, and Interfusion have definitely figured out how to scale their their model to multiple physician groups, but we were struggling with it. But I thought if we could develop our own processes, make those uniform across all of our infusion centers, that we could scale the business, we could provide a higher level of service to our patients. Ultimately, that will transi- translate into you know a better business, and it did. Uh, fortunately, Brian and I were correct when we uh, made that that bet. And that took that risk, but it paid off. Yeah, I love that. I mean, it's all about just running in your lane. And you guys found something you were really good at. You saw an opportunity and you went with it. And going back to your comment before about building a great team, I mean, you guys just found something that really worked. Mm-hmm. And it's it's a, it's it's been really neat to see see it all unfold to this point. And I know some of our listeners right now are, are encouraged by that because – it's uh, it's risk. I mean, you take a calculated risk, but it's still a risk when you venture out in a business like that. And you guys have really tried to be flexible and pivot where you can and learn all you can. And going back to the creation of the National Infusion Center Association and all these things, it's it's just an exciting journey as long as you're willing to connect with other people and get strength where you, from other organizations where you can and, and run in your lane, do what you can do. And if if you're not good at it, like what does John Maxwell say? Sur- surround yourself with a bunch of smart people who are really good at doing what you're not so great at doing. Absolutely. And you guys have done that. Well, then let's fast forward to today. I mean, that's an awesome story. It, it's really encouraging and inspiring. Tell us about today. What are you most excited about in the infusion industry today? Yeah, so when we sold our business in 2012, and we actually have a really good story. I mean, most folks that sell their businesses – um, you know, they have horror stories or, you know, maybe not horror stories, but just stories that don't end at least the way they wanted it to. We sold to Paragon Healthcare, our infusion centers, and we had a great transition. Um, Rick Allen and his team, um, just took good care of us, uh, you know, lived up to the promises they made and, 
And, um, and so fast forward to today, you know, we built We Infuse. That's an infusion center app, uh, software application dedicated uh, to infusion centers. So we like to say we systemize our expertise um, and we like to leave behind our expertise into a, a platform that users, whether they're bu- on the billing team, on the clinical team, on the managerial team, can use to optimize their infusion center. The hottest topics today in infusion, uh, some of the things have changed, some of them are still the same. Uh, reimbursement, um, there's always those challenges with reimbursement. Uh, payers, as more and more drugs are launched, payers are paying more and more attention to the space. So, you know, the authorization criteria is getting harder, um, what we call utilization management. Um, so payers applying different techniques uh, to make sure the patient is actually qualified or actually deems necessary for the actual infusion. Those processes are getting more and more difficult to get a patient actually on the drug. And so you've got to cross your T's and dot your I's when you treat these uh, patients because the drugs are super expensive and you don't want to be left with the bill. Um, there's regulatory and government you know, challenges, uh, pin stroke risk. I mentioned it earlier. Um, you know, who knows how the Trump administration or where the Trump administration will land. There's conversations about moving drugs from part B to D. So they're moving from part B as in boy to D as in dog potentially. And what's that going to look like? Are those going to be the infusion drugs as well? Uh, obviously the NICA national infusion center associations, um, really working on that issue to make sure providers are, can continue to bill infusion through part B as in boy. Um, and then there's just other other new drugs, which are challenges, but also exciting, whether it's a, the drugs that are in the pipeline for Alzheimer's or they're, they're the drugs that are in the pipeline for Parkinson's. So it's an exciting time. Uh, I mean, we've just launched Ocrevus, which is a great drug for MS patients. Uh, and since I've sold the business, multiple drugs have been launched. I think the last drug that was launched when we sold was Actimro. Now there's Intivio. There's been Lista. Um, there's Ocrevus. I mean, the list continues to grow. Truly, it, it is a constantly changing landscape. And when I asked you what you're most excited about today, you mentioned We Infuse, which is awesome because we truly are excited about We Infuse. And just total shameless plug for those of you listening, if you haven't done it and you haven't seen the software, please go to weinfuse.com, schedule a demo. We will get in touch with you because at the time of the recording of this podcast, we're the first and only software solution for the entire Infusion Center workflow. I held another demo today with a company that was pr- comparing us to another major EMR out there. And at, at, they said right out of the gate, we want to know what the difference is between we infuse and this EMR. I said, great. Went through the interview, went through the uh, demo meeting. And every step of the way, I said, how does this pl- software platform that you're comparing us to do this? Ten minutes later, how does it do that? How does it do that? And at every point of the way, they said, well, it doesn't do that. Because with We Infuse, uh, like you can explain better than I can, Reese, the challenges you guys dealt with, but you guys looked for, when you had your standalone infusion suites, a solution to handle everything from initial patient intake to the whole benefits investigation process to a chair-based scheduling, a way to schedule, to a a way for the nurses to chart electronically, to inventory management and ordering all in one place. That's right. Because right now, everybody we talk to, you know, we're talking to different practices all over the U.S. every day of the week. Nobody has one solution that's all in one place. And so that's what we're excited about. So if you haven't done so, if you listen to this podcast, definitely check out weinfuse.com. If not just for the blogs, which are great, but schedule a demo and see how We Infuse can help you with your practice. Okay, that's the end of my shameless plug. Um, well, with everything that's going on in the infusion practice, and I'm, I'm even thinking, as you were mentioning it, we might want to do a podcast on that issue that's developing from Medicare B to D and all that stuff. We could dive really deep on that. that we don't have time to do here, but um, that might be a future episode. So stay tuned for that. But uh, what's one parting piece of advice for our listeners, knowing that many of our listeners either own or, or play a very important role in their infusion centers? I think we I think the most important takeaway here is make your make your infusion center process dependent and not people dependent. Um, people make mistakes, me included. So try to rely on a process, whether it's you're using a piece of software like we infuse or other pieces of software that you've connected together 
to accomplish some of the things that we infuse can do. Um, you know, you make it process dependent. I think so many times infusion centers and in healthcare organizations, um, you know, there's that key person. And if that key person leaves, then no one else really knows what the left knows the left hand, what the right hand is doing, you know, the phrase. Um, and so I think it's really important that you develop and continue to hone in your processes and you're never done improving. And so just when you think you refine one process, you can always refine another. And so that's kind of how we always approached our business uh, for better or worse. I mean, we made a lot of mistakes and we, but we tried every day to, to improve. I love that because a process is repeatable yeah. and a process is trainable and a process makes it to where there's strength for the whole team. And instead of, like you said, you know, you have one person that maybe they leave or maybe they can't ever go on vacation because they're so critical to the, to the right. flow of the infusion suite. So that's great. Great piece of advice. Well, Reese, thank you for joining us today. And we're excited to keep this podcast going. We really hope if this has been an encouragement to you guys, you can say thank you by go into iTunes and please rate and review the podcast that helps us just get exposure, get the word out. And also, like I mentioned, we are going to be interviewing Brian Nyquist, who runs the National Infusion Center Association. And especially when it comes to those policy issues that are coming down the pipe headed our way, he will be an expert on that. So you will absolutely get the latest and greatest details on things that affect us all. And we'll do that interview live at the FSR Conference 2018 coming up. So thank you for joining us today. This is Dylan McCabe and Reese Norris with the We Infuse podcast signing off, and we will catch you in the next episode.